Mark Jeffers versus Jermaine Brown, 10 rounds in the super middleweight division. This is on the undercard of Jonas versus Mayer. I think this is a 50-50 fight. I think it's going to be a pretty good fight. This is a pretty good card in its entirety, man. I don't always get to do all of the breakdown that you guys put in the comment section below, but as I say in all the videos, if you become a member, those suggested videos go to the top and I'll do my best to get those done for you. This is a video brought to my attention by my guy TJ holding down the membership section. A couple of you also mentioned in the comments that you have some interest on this fight as well too, so we shall get it done. Let's get into it. Let's start with Mark Jeffers. 16 wins, no losses, four wins by way of knockout. I've only seen Jeffers fight about a few times, right? But the way his career has been, his team has done a great job of allowing him to develop and to grow and to build inside of the ring. The first fight I saw of him was when he fought uh, Michelle Garcia, someone who had a record of 16 and one going into that fight. Now, Jeffers had the height advantage and the reach advantage. Thought he did a great job of using both of those physical advantage to his advantage and use it effectively. And he boxed his way to a clear and comfortable victory, right? He won that fight kind of wide. At the same time, it was a good step up against him because to that point he's been fighting guys with not the greatest records they had losing records so it was a good step up win for him and it was a good confident win last year he fought twice one of those fights he fought zach shelley i believe shelley was the favorite shelley has a win over jermaine brown who is fighting this weekend to make things even sweeter it was a very good fight between jeffers and shelley right both men we're not afraid to let their hands go. They didn't avoid each other. They stood in the pocket. They both took punches and kept coming forward. Neither man backed down at any given moment. I wasn't expecting that type of fight from Jeffers because he's not a big puncher like that. Like, I don't think he's that brawling type of guy either. He's a physical presence, but he doesn't look like that uh, brawling, physicality, mix it up type of fighter to me. But that wasn't the case against Shelly, man. I thought he definitely held his own inside of the pocket. He was landing some big shots, had some really good body shots, some nice overhand shots. And I really liked how his placement and his punches has developed over time. You know, usually when you're up and coming, you just want to knock cats out. So you're always head hunting. But man, he did a really good job of slowing down Shelly by going to the body. I was really impressed by that. And I think he has a pretty good chin as well, too, because Shelly caught him cleanly with some shots as well too there was a level of confidence i saw in jeffers as the fight progressed sometimes a little too overconfident a little reckless and his hands are a little bit lower than he needs to be and that's when he would get clipped or he would get countered but for the most part man I thought he did really good, performed really well under the pressure, under the moment. Shelly had good moments on the inside, right? He brought the fight to Jeffers, but to Jeffers' credit, man, he did not back down. You know, sometimes you get into these big fights and the moment can be too big for you. That wasn't the case for Jeffers on the night. Sometimes you see fighters get thrown into a firefight, like that war type of fight. And we've seen guys not take a liking to that and they freeze and they shell up and they back off and once they back off that's when the other guy has gained the momentum and they usually come and dominate the rest of the fight because for that split second when i was testing you you backed down jeffers didn't do that he stood the test and he welcomed it and it's a good sign because every fight isn't always going to be a boxing match every fight isn't always going to be a fight where you can just depend on your skill. Sometimes you got to dig deep. Sometimes you got to put your heart on display. And sometimes you just got to find a way how to come out on top. And I thought Jeffers did a great job of that. I was very impressed with how he handled everything in that fight. However, I still think it's a little bit raw in some areas to me, but man, I really like his confidence. Uh, I, I really think he believes in his skill and he has the size and the skill to back it up. He can box, but then we also saw that he can fight, right? I think he's a well-balanced fighter with more potential than what we've seen so far. But again, I really like the confidence, man. As I've said before in previous videos before, man, confidence in sports is a massive, massive thing and goes a long way. I think he's in tough again this weekend against Jermaine Brown. 
going to be a good fight, but let's talk about his opponent, Jermaine Brown. 13 wins, two losses, and four wins by way of knockout. As I mentioned before, Brown also fought Zach Shelley. He came out on the losing side of it. Then after his loss against Chelly, he fought Ivan Zuko and lost that fight as well. So, you know, there's a span where he was on a two-fight losing streak. Last year, he got his win, and that's when he became back in the win column. So he's definitely going to be looking to build off of that win. When he fought Zach Chelly, I thought he had a tough time adjusting to the speed and the movement of Chelly and the footwork, and he just wasn't able to keep up or throw enough, in my opinion. Then he would go on to fight Ivan Zuko, and when he fought Zuko, I thought he did a better job in the first two rounds, definitely. Even though he lost that fight, I thought he started much better. Zuko is a guy who has won a great a majority of his fights by way of knockout, some type of stoppage, so he's a guy that can punch. Now, in their fight, man, I thought things changed very early. Forgot if it was the second round, I believe, second or third round, where... Jermaine Brown was on the front foot, really pressing the matter, really pushing the pace. And he had Zuko in the corner and he was letting his hands go, right? Not really focusing on defense too much. He just saw an opportunity to let the hands fly and he let it fly. But Zuko returned fire with the shot that as soon as it connected on Brown's chin, he just kind of backed up a little bit and he kind of retreated. And then Zuko was on the offense and Brown almost got stopped, but the bell rang. And that's when I felt like, man, he just kind of changed the aggression of the fight until later in the fight, last round. But there were a few rounds, man, where I thought Zuko had him hurt. There were a few rounds where Brown looked hesitant. And usually he's a patient guy, yes, but I thought he was a little too patient. Obviously, he was probably weary of getting hit like that once he felt the power and didn't want to get clipped. I also thought he looked tired going into the sixth round, but to his credit, man... He never gave up. He always came back. He always dug deep. He always returned fire with something, but it wasn't any shot that he threw or had that discouraged Zuko. Zuko felt the power and he knew that Zuko and Zuko knew that he was a bigger puncher and had more power and could change the momentum like that with his shots than Brown could impose on him. Good thing is that Jeffers isn't as big as a puncher as Zuko, at least on paper anyway. So on paper, I think power-wise, both men are evenly matched, but I also think Jeffers is a little busier of a fighter than Brown, in my opinion. In Brown's most recent fight, he fought Ashley Dumetz in a fight that really wasn't too much of a challenge for him. Um, Dumetz looked very raw to me, looked like he was still you know, learning and still working his way up. I, he had suffered five losses to that point already. He's a very modest record. So it was a fight where um, Brown was supposed to look good. It was a fight where he was supposed to dominate. And that's exactly what he did. He didn't play around. He came in there, handled business, did what he was supposed to do. But there were also some exchanges there where Brown went in a little too overconfident and Dumetz countered him. Right. If Dumetz was able to sit down on his punches a little bit more and just fight with more confidence and belief, who knows what could have happened or how much more dangerous that he could have been. But Brown is an aggressive starter, man. He just came forward and really just started to let his hands fly very early in the fight because you could tell he wanted to get the knockdown. He wanted to get the stoppage because he was really sitting down on his punches. So he came in there with a plan, executed the plan very well. He did what he was supposed to do. He got the stoppage win. He got back in the win column. It feels good to win any fight by some type of stoppage, some type of knockout. It just feels good. And so that's what he did. And he closed out the show within four rounds. So it'll be interesting to see if he can ride that momentum going into this fight with a very confident Mark Jeffers. So who wins? You know, I like Jeffers to win this fight by decision because Brown in his fights, man, felt like the fights that he's lost, he's gotten out work and he wasn't willing to take that risk, right? And fight that fire with fire every round. And if you're always on the back foot, man, the judges don't like that. Right, he, The judges like an aggressive fighter. They want to see people throw punches and just be confident. Even if you're getting hit, they want, to, they want to see you hit back. And I don't know if Brown is going to take that risk if need be. He might just try to fight a comfortable fight, a safe fight, and see if he can outbox Jeffers because Brown's a pretty good boxer. He's got good reach, right? He's been in there with some tough competition. He, he he knows how to handle himself. Even though he didn't get the win against those tougher competition, he still got the experience. So 
It's going to be interesting to see what the game plan is here. Uh, I think how you win matters. And I have to, you have to, you cannot ignore the performance between the two common opponents in Zach Shelley. Jeffers won that fight comfortably when he fought Zach Shelley. It wasn't the same for Jermaine Brown. So you have to take that into play. Jeffers is wild at times, yes, but he's not afraid to let his hands go, man. I, I'm, I'm someone who... I want to see you be able to take that risk. I want to know that if the going gets tough and you need to get back the momentum, that you're going to take that risk. You got to take risks inside of the rings. And I think Jeffers is going to take more risk if need be, but it's going to be a calculated risk. And I also think, man, we've seen like Brown, when his chin is touched up a little bit, he can become hesitant and he can kind of retreat a little bit. So I wonder if he gets touched up cleanly too many times, how will he respond? But at the same time, Jeffers doesn't have punishing power and he might, Brown might be able to use that to his advantage and use his jab and find a way to box on the outside, use his skill set to force Jeffers to come to him, to hunt him down and allow him to overexert himself, allow him to be someone who overextends himself and you catch him with counters and you catch him with jabs and you fight a very smart, calculated fight. But Jeffers, man, man, he going to take risks. I also like his consistency in his volume. And I think he's a guy that will turn it up if he needs to take that risk and get the momentum back on his side. So I like Jeffers to win this fight by decision. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple ways that you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App Panda will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel and will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Man, I appreciate each of you. Shout out to all the members holding down the membership section. I appreciate each of you. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video, this time do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and we'll definitely see you next time.